Hi friends, this is Dina and welcome to my new video. I'm really excited to show you this September theme because it's truly one of my favorites that I've ever done. But as you can see from the length of this video, this is also one of the longest plan with me videos that I've ever done. So I think without further ado, let's get into the setup process. So as always, we are starting with my cover page for this one. And for my theme for September, I chose to paint some mushrooms. I know that's not very original. I feel like every other bullet journal content creator on the internet is making mushrooms for their theme for September, but I swear I'm not unoriginal. I just love mushrooms so much that I cannot for the life of me, skip this opportunity to paint mushrooms for September. If you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen my countless mushroom basket photos and mushroom pictures already in my stories. <laughs> but yeah, I just love mushroom picking every autumn. It's my favorite hobby of all time. And that's truly the thing that I enjoy the most. So when I have the opportunity to paint some mushrooms for my theme, I will for sure do that. <laughs> So as you can see for this theme, I'm using gouache again. It's my favorite medium. So I was really happy to use it again for this month. For my cover page, I chose to paint some seps or king bolides or penny buns or porcini mushrooms or boletus edulis mushrooms. They have so many names, but I just ended up going with this one because it's a beautiful mushroom and it's one that I don't have that much experience with because I just seem to find other mushrooms more, but it is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful mushrooms, so I ended up going with that for my cover page. As you can see here, I lost some footage when I was painting the first one, but don't worry, I am going to be showing you how I paint more of these because of course there's multiple in this cover page. I tried to do things a little bit differently this time. As you can see, I don't really have that overhead shot here at all. I'm uh, pretty much only using my camera for uh, filming this whole video. I mean, I have a couple of clips here that I've taken that I have taken with my phone, but most of this video was filmed with my camera. And instead of having my camera and filming these overhead shots I wanted to instead kind of film from the side and that was actually a much easier process and I enjoyed that much more and I don't know if you have any opinions on that please give them to me but if you don't I take it as you know you find it fine either way. <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, how I made the mushrooms is that I went with a lighter base color for the whole cap first, and then I started darkening some areas of it. I mainly left the lower side of the cap a little bit lighter in color, and then I darkened the colors on the top. Here for this biggest bullied mushroom, I actually made the cap kind of asymmetrical at first, but I did not really enjoy how that looked. It kind of looked like I did that by mistake, and I fixed that by making the cap part a little bit more symmetrical and I actually think that that worked much better. These mushroom caps don't have that many like actual um, wrinkles I guess that some other mushrooms have. They have some little dents and some asymmetrical parts in them for sure. They're not like perfectly round or anything so with that darker color I tried to add some of those darker lines here to kind of represent some little dents and some uh, little bumps in the mushroom caps but I don't know it was kind of like just adding some colors here and there and then just blending them onto the other surrounding colors. I have to say I didn't have that big of an experience with painting mushrooms. I did do a mushroom theme for last September as well so I did have some sort of experience but not much so I have to say that I was kind of winging it and again you know the color placement for these darker colors especially was kind of like something that I just decided to do and I think that it worked well in the end. If you if you look at real mushroom pictures you probably notice that you know the colors are not perfectly blended looking there is some lines and some dots here and there and some discoloration so i tried to kind of embrace that by not blending everything perfectly and just adding some darker little spots everywhere and i think again that that worked in my favor pretty well so i would say that if you are painting mushrooms you don't have to make it perfect and also i don't think that you have to try to make it super realistic or anything at least for me this type of um, more uh, freeing process actually kind of worked pretty well 
For the layout for this page, I kind of wanted that most of the mushrooms would be on the right side of the spread, but I also wanted to extend them onto the left side a little bit more as well, because I was going to make my calendar there, so I thought that it would just kind of look really nice and cohesive and balanced if some of the mushrooms were kind of also um, spreading onto the left side as well. So I ended up just sketching some more onto the left page, and I also extended some of the the stems of the mushrooms a little bit so it wouldn't look like they were all kind of starting from the same line. First I had the idea of making some ground and some little uh, leaves and some grass on the bottom of this page but I ended up not doing that in the end so extending the stems just made more sense. Bullied mushrooms have this spongy texture underneath their caps, so I was mixing together some yellow and green and white, and I was adding that color to some areas that kind of, you know, showed that spongy area with the pores, as you can see. But then I started working on the stems of the mushrooms. So I was mixing together some white and some browns and some yellow and some red as well, just to create this kind of beige color for the stems of the mushrooms. Again, I mixed a lot of white in because I wanted it to be really light in color. I also darkened some areas for the stems, like um, especially underneath the cap, I wanted to make that darker. And then I usually darkened the right side of the stem a little bit more. And I also added some light orange or light brown colored kind of like lines or little areas onto the stems as well. So it would look more like they actually do. I'm going to be probably adding some actual pictures of these mushrooms that I have taken here on the screen if you want to see how they actually look like, but if you are painting mushrooms, I would say that you probably should be looking at some reference photos because they will usually help you a lot more than just, you know, making it from your head. <laughs> As you can see, I was also adding some little dirt on the um, bottom of the stems. Again, I was first thinking about just making them on the ground and adding some grass and things like that, but I actually think that making it like this and adding some dirt in them works really well, and so I decided to do that. By the way, I know that there's some cuts in this process video. I wanted to, you know, cut some things out because as you can see, this is one of my longest videos ever, and I just had so much footage and I felt like you probably are going to be able to see what I do here anyway, so I don't have to, you know, include the process for every single little detail. So I was adding the dirt by just, you know, stippling some dots and some little lines on the bottom of the stem, and then I was adding some darker brown on top of them as well, so they would look more 3D. And then I was also just kind of shading the stem underneath all of those little dirt patches by using light brown color, so they would look like they are popping more from the stem. And I think that that actually worked really well. After I was done with the painting, which I think turned out really cute, I started working on some other elements in this page as well. So besides mushroom paintings, the theme for this September monthly setup was definitely this like, I don't know, vintage botanical um, books and illustrations. So I took my handy old book page and started adding it onto my page. And I know probably some of you are saying, Oh my gosh, again? <laughs> but I've been trying to not use it for a couple of months, so when I come back, I can again just start overusing it completely. So I'm definitely adding it to the cover page here and to all of my other pages as well. I love adding this detail. <laughs> As you can see, I'm adding it onto the upper right side of the spread, but so far I have just added it on top of the mushrooms, but I wanted the mushrooms to be on top of this page. So I just added it here and then I kind of used like a tracing paper trick that I have up my sleeve and I traced the mushroom cap of uh, this painting and then just sketched that on top of the paper and then I cut that part out. And I don't have actual tracing paper. I have some glycine bags or some things that I've gotten from, you know, packages that I've ordered. And I most of the time just use those because they work the same way. And with that, I was able to trace the um, sketch on top and I was able to cut out that area of the mushroom cap. 
I also wanted to add some more of that paper onto the left side because I wanted that uh, old book page to kind of continue throughout that whole spread. So I just added that onto the left corner as well. And then I added my um, calendar for the month on top. As you can see, I was using this dark green paper and I had also glued some Archer and Olive uh, Neapolitan notepad uh, craft paper on top, which I really like. I think that it definitely gave that old um, botanical book and vintage vibe to this bread and took it to another level, I think. And on top of that, I made my calendar grid with my brown gel pen. I think it worked better than a black one, so it didn't have that big of a contrast. Next, I cut a rectangle out of my notebook page and I just kind of colored it with this really, really light yellow color that I had just laying on my palette. And I wanted it to look like, you know, one of those tea stained papers or something like that. And then I glued it on top of this calendar and I wanted that to look like it was some sort of tape or something. I don't know how to explain this style, but I mean, you can see what I did. I also made a little drop shadow to that little rectangle tape thingy with my light gray brush pen, but I actually forgot to film that part when I glued it onto the page, but you can see what I did. Then I stamped the days of the week onto the calendar and I really love how that looks. And my memory card was running out of space, so there's a little cuts here and there, but I stamped the word September on the right upper side of the cover page. And uh, then I also used some white shell pen to kind of make a little outline for that so it would pop from the page more. I definitely like the stamped look and I know that I've been using stamps a lot, but they're just such an easy way to, you know, make headers and I think that they so many times work with my theme and style. And a last thing, I swear this has taken so long, but the last thing was adding this red gold uh, shimmering watercolor paint as little sparkles on my page next to the mushrooms. But that is it for my cover page. Again, I know that we were there for so long, but that was a long process for me filming it too. It took me so many hours. When I added all of these files to my editing software, I actually had like 16 hours of uncut footage Footage, so I don't know if that gives you like an um, idea of how long <laughs> I did this, but it was definitely a long time. So yeah, I love my cover page, but now we are setting my tracker and playlist page as I usually do here for my second um, spread. And for this, I wanted to paint some fly agaric mushrooms. I wanted to mostly focus on edible mushrooms for this theme, but I cannot skip, you know, my opportunity to paint some fly agaric mushrooms in my spreads as well. So yeah, these are not edible. These are poisonous don't eat them. And in fact, never eat mushrooms that you cannot identify, okay? Please, thank you. <laughs> so I was just painting some of these fly agaric mushrooms into my trucker spread. I love the red color on them and I really loved how much color they brought to the spread. So of course I wanted to include them. Um, as you can see, I was just kind of adding this little light spot on the mushrooms in like the center of them. And then I made the edges a little bit darker in color. I have to say that even though I love this spread, I feel like the mushrooms itself look a little bit unrealistic because of the lighting that I ended up doing with them. Like I feel like the um, contrast is a bit harsh and kind of weird, but it's fine. You know, they cannot all be perfect. And also I don't actually think that this is bad at all. There was just like a one little thing that I noticed while I was, you know, flipping through the pages that I had done. I know that we are definitely like super speedy with this process, by the way. Again, I had so much footage and I just needed to include so many things. So I just had to speed it up. So apologies for that. There is another mushroom painting video coming this month. So don't worry. Um, so yeah, I was just um, painting them, making that gorgeous red color, adding a lot of shadows. And as you can see, I made the little spots in these mushrooms. They are super fun and I love how the spots look. So I was simply, um, you know, focusing on that detail a lot. As you can see, I was using my small brush and just, uh, I was actually shading all of these spots in the mushrooms, which kind of probably also helps you understanding how it took that long. <laughs> 
I was adding some lighter gray color onto the bottom of all of the spots and then I was also adding some darker red color underneath all of those spots so again they look like they're popping from the cap of the mushroom a little bit more and they look more 3d which I think actually worked here decently well I ended up going with this kind of yellowish grayish tone instead of white for the spots this time because they're never truly white in the nature and I think think that it just made them look a little bit more realistic and also gave this a nice like hint of color instead of having only that white color for all of the spots. I also tried to make the spots kind of asymmetrical so I didn't want to add them perfectly for all of the mushrooms. As you can see some of the mushrooms have a little bit less uh, spots in them and some have more. In reality there are even mushrooms that don't have any of the spots but I just really liked how they looked so I was having a hard time you know calming myself and saying like don't overdo it. I was just kind of going with the flow. But when the mushroom caps were all done, I started working on the stems and this was the simple, you know, process. I don't think that the colors are quite there for this, but I don't know. I just decided to, you know, do this pretty fast because I had already spent so much time on these mushrooms and this painting. So as you can see, I was adding this kind of pinkish, orangey undertone to the stems and then I started adding some brown color underneath the caps and on the right side of the stems as well. And these... Uh, mushrooms and the stems have this kind of like skirt to them sometimes so I was also you know shading underneath that so it would pop more but yeah overall I think that the contrast was a little bit weird like I feel like this painting almost has like you know if you're editing pictures it has like temperature plus five or something like it looks very warm in tone which is not a bad thing at all but I feel like that was something that I wasn't planning on doing so I don't know it looks a little bit weird to me but again, it is good and I actually love all of these spreads that I made. Everything, like all the little criticism that I'm saying, it's not like trying to bash what I created. It's just a little thing that I noticed. <laughs> But then I started working on the rest of the spread. As you can see, I again added that old book page to the, mainly to the upper left corner of the spread. And then I added my little tracker header on top as well. I used the same green paper and then the craft paper on top. And then I stamped the word trackers on top of that. I really love how that looks. And I loved how the header was able to bring so much color to the spread. I did the same kind of trackers that I usually do for for my habit trackers I just used um, a couple of different colored papers on top of each other and then I made my mini calendars on top of the lighter colored paper I ended up adding these little mini calendars a little bit like um, asymmetrically so I didn't make them all in just like one row I kind of uh, glued the right side a little bit more up than the left one because I had the mushroom illustrations under there and I didn't want them to you know be on top of what I just painted if that makes any sense so I just kind of glued the uh, right row a little bit more up but I think that it worked well and it doesn't look silly at all or anything <laughs> Then on the right side or the right page, I stamped the word playlist on the um, upper side of the spread. And then I made a little frame for the page as well. I'm going to have my super simple playlist here. I did not do any album cover things here at all. I was just using my 005 Figma Micron and writing the artist name and the song name in here without any decorations. And I actually think that that worked really well considering that all of the other elements in this this page were kind of over the top and very detailed so I really like that the simple playlist kind of balanced the spread nicely. I actually forgot to add some sparkles onto the spread so I'm gonna be doing that later but I really like how it turned out but now we are going to be setting up my content planner. By the way, talking about content, I know that my um, content uploading schedule was actually pretty good in uh, the month of July. I think I was posting videos pretty much every Sunday and now I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit. So I'm really sorry about the lack of uploads in the last weeks. I'm trying to um, upload more this month again, or I mean, I guess in the next weeks, I have some more videos filmed already and I'm really excited to post them. So if you want to see my future uploads, make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon as well to be notified of my future videos. 
This time we are starting with the old book page. I just realized that that probably works a lot better because then I don't need to, you know, use a tracing paper afterwards. So I ended up just adding it here already and then painting on top of that later. And I think that was a great idea. Then I was adding some more decorations on this page. I wanted to have that green color here as well. So I added it onto the left side of this spread. I was again using the same kind of content planning layout that I usually do, but instead of having that content calendar that I usually like to add, I actually ended up just um, skipping that in its entirety. And I ended up making the right page into a brain dump page, but the left side is the same. I was just adding a couple of sections for different videos where I can add the video name and when I would like to post that and then I will add some tasks underneath it if I need to for example film take a thumbnail picture and edit it record add caption whatever things that I need to add and this has worked for me really well then I stamped the words content planning on top of it and I actually really love how this spread looks like even though it is very simple so far but we're gonna be painting on it anyway so it's going to be more detailed and more time consuming for sure. <laughs> I wanted to have an opportunity to, you know, paint one of my like probably most um, forged mushroom, if that makes any sense, which is a chanterelle. I wanted the layout of the mushrooms to be a little bit different. So I was thinking that maybe you have picked the mushrooms and now you have just placed them on a table and now they're in this like little fun pile and you're painting them from that view, if that makes sense. And I really liked that layout and that composition a lot. I actually had some issues painting this specific mushroom because I always struggle with yellow shadows like um I like painting things that are yellow but the problem with them is that I never find quite the right shadow color for them I feel like when I go for something a little bit more orangey it's not contrasty enough and when I add some more uh, black tones it starts to look kind of neon so that has been my issue I think that this page definitely turned out super pretty anyway but that was definitely something that I noticed and I had a little struggle with but I feel like it's just something that I have to you know research i have to look at some videos and i don't know research color theory a little bit better so i know what i should do but yeah that has definitely been one of my like um issues that i've had with painting for the longest time but that wasn't my only issue with filming this video and like I said, I loved filming this one, so that wasn't it, but you know. But when we were on our trip in July and my boyfriend had borrowed my camera to take some videos of the trip, he had forgotten to turn off the 4K. And since that's nothing that I usually do myself, like I never film things with 4K, I didn't realize that that was on and I just filmed this whole video in 4K, which meant that I did not have any space on my computer to do this. Like I was, I've been so like, low on space on my computer and that only was a bit tricky but i don't know if you notice a big quality change and you like this please tell me so maybe i will do this in the future too i mean Honestly, I think that the video looks better than usually and not only because of that, but I also like the like the angles because I was filming with my camera and did not do those overhead shots. I actually think that it looks much better than, you know, my usual videos. But again, this is something that I don't think everyone, you know, cares about. So I don't know if you notice a big difference and you like this way more please tell me so i can do the same next time i don't know this was an experimental thing for sure and without me even knowing after I had painted the mushrooms, I added this little craft paper box onto the bottom right side and then I added some more of that old book page because, you know, it looked a little bit weird with the box glued on top. But yeah, I really love how this spread turned out and I cannot wait to use it. Again, the yellows are kind of neon and super vibrant, but again, that's not an issue at all. <laughs> like, that is a pretty good thing, I would say. Then as the last thing, I flipped to the previous page and just added some of those sparkles onto the page that I forgot to do earlier and also added the same ones on to the content planning spread as well. 
And after that, I just did some minor tweaking to the page. I, for some reason, thought that, you know, this painting wasn't enough. So I just took my palette again and I just added some little dirt areas on the stems of the mushrooms. I don't really know if this was a good idea. I don't think it really changed the painting that much, but it also didn't make it super pretty or anything. So like, I don't know why I added it, but I guess sometimes, you know, you have this thing in your brain, you're like, just do it and you do it and you know that's it <laughs> But the next spread that we are working on is a really, really simple one. I did it in like 10 minutes and then I moved on to the next one. But for this spread, I ended up adding just the green paper and then um, gluing the crushed paper on top on both of the green papers. Um, this was kind of like a spread that I knew that I probably will need at some point, but I don't know for what exactly. Like, do I want to add it for my goals or is it for work projects or is it for my upcoming shop launch and print making things I have not even said anything about that yet but you know I just I was just thinking about having some more space to write things down if I want to and I just wanted to decorate the page a little bit but that is that is it for the spread it was again super fast and now we are moving on to my last spreads which are my weekly spreads for this video, I decided to leave in the footage of me actually cutting the page because I feel like I haven't been really including that a lot lately and I think that some of you might be interested in how I cut the pages. Um, I just cut the bottom side of all of the Dutch doors away and then I also add the tabs on the sides of all of the flap Dutch door thingies. <laughs> I started doing Dutch Door Weeklies I think in October last year and I swear I'm never going back to those full spread weeklies ever again. I remember how hard it was to always find time to set up and decorate a weekly spread for the upcoming week or even for the next month. You know, that was so much time and so many pages to set up for just weeklies in my bullet journal so having all of them in this nice compact weekly spread set up that I'm doing beforehand that is you know always ready to use it has a nice kind of free form layout to it that I don't need to you know stress out about beforehand I love it so much and I would 100% recommend then I flipped to the last page kind of underneath all of those Dutch doors and I glued in the old book page and I think that that was a nice backdrop for everything and it definitely worked with the style and theme that I have for this um, September theme so far and then I started working on the mushrooms on the lower left side of the spread and I have to say that this spread is probably my own least favorite because the mushrooms that I ended up choosing were just not super vibrant and they don't have to be as vibrant vibrant as the chanterelle spread at all you know they just look like they lacked some contrast but you know these mushrooms are really light in color so you know it kind of looks uh, realistic in some way but again it was kind of like too light for me uh, the mushroom that I'm painting here I don't know if it has an English name um, but the Latin name is Cortinarius Caperatus <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i don't know yeah okay but yeah that mushroom is a beautiful mushroom in my opinion it's one that i haven't really like been that familiar with for a long time i actually found it for the first time this year and i successfully identified it and i ended up then eating the mushroom because apparently it's a very good mushroom and i do have to say that the mushrooms are probably one of my favorites or if not favorite so far that i've ever tasted it was super Super good when I just you know had a bread and just fried some of this with like butter and some salt and pepper and just put that onto the bread it was so good um, but it is a mushroom that I would not ever recommend to you know uh, for beginners to go and find because it is an easy mushroom to mix for other poisonous ones if you are not um, that experienced 
Many people say that the mushroom's cap is kind of like an old, wet and wrinkled shower cap. And that definitely makes sense, especially the smaller ones that have the cap kind of closed, if that makes sense. They definitely have the same vibe. They do look like, like an old wrinkled shower cap. They also have this light colored ring on them. They also have this pattern on the stem between the ring and the cap that kind of looks like northern lights, or at least many people like call it that here in Finland. They also have this beautiful light lilac tinge on the cups and I wanted to just add that so I was kind of like blending it with my finger on top of the mushroom caps and that actually looks surprisingly realistic to the actual mushrooms. But after the painting was done, I did another step that I actually did not film because it was kind of hard to get onto the frame, but I added some of that old book page behind the mushrooms. You might see it soon, but I was just making some little cutouts of the paper and just adding it behind the mushrooms and it definitely looks kind of cool, but again, I feel like the mushrooms are just too light. So maybe if I would do this again, I would make them a little bit darker or I would just, you know, pick another one that would look more interesting. But onto the bottom right side, I added this craft paper box that's meant for maybe some notes or to do's for this month. And then I also added a small calendar on the right side for the whole month. And I added the stamped header for September there as well. And then on the edges of each of those tabs, I actually added that green paper here. It doesn't really look good right now, but I ended up just, you know, cutting them to shape off camera. So I was just, you know, gluing that onto the edge and then later on I was cutting it with that tab so it looks better. But onto the last spread, I also added this little box here that I can use for my memories of um, September. I also stamped the word memories onto the left side of this last spread, but I did that again off camera. I had so many little things that I had to do and it, they were all kind of hard to film and repetitive. So I ended up doing some things off camera for this, which is maybe unfortunate if you want to see that. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I also added the weekly headers for each of those tabs as well, so I could always see what the week is that we are currently on. And then I added a little color onto the left side of the spread, because this area you can see kind of behind all of those tabs. But I first decided to go for the craft paper, but I didn't really like it, so I added this um, darker brown paper instead, so it would look more interesting. Then on the other side of the tabs, I decided to add that golden color because I think that it made a nice contrast to the whole page and just made it look more interesting. And I'm very happy that I did because the sparkle is beautiful. Oh, but finally, we have one last thing to do and then the whole setup is done. Trust me, watching this video probably took a long time, but setting it up was much longer. <laughs> but then I just added my task list on to the first Dutch door here on the right side. I just added all of the days of the week and then I stamped the word tasks on top of that and this is it for my monthly setup for September. But now before this video ends, let's do a quick flip through of all of the pages that we set in this one. I am super happy with these pages. They have the perfect autumn aesthetic and vibe for me. I am fully living for this and I'm super excited for autumn as many of you probably know already. So this definitely tickles the perfect spot in my brain for that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really happy that you tuned in for this video and watched until the end because this was a long one. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you liked the video, and leave a mushroom emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!